Converse Technology, Inc., was a technology company located in Woodbury, New York in the United States, that developed and marketed telecommunications software. The company focused on providing value-added services to telecommunication service providers, in particular to mobile network operators. Converse Technology had several wholly or partly owned subsidiaries. The name Converse is a fusion of the words communication and versatility. Founded in 1982, the company went public on the Nasdaq stock market in 1986. Led by co-founder and CEO Jacob Kobe Alexander, the company originally specialized in centralized hardware, software systems for voice and fax messaging and sold them to telecommunications companies and other large enterprises. Much of its funding came from Israeli government subsidies and tax credits provided to research and development for high-tech firms. By the mid-1990s, one of its most successful products allowed legal authorities and intelligence agencies to record and store data collected from intercepted communications. Starting in the late 1990s, Converse's voice messaging software became its main product and the company grew rapidly with the surge in mobile phone use, passing the $1 billion mark in revenues. It established a formidable position in the worldwide mobile voicemail management market and sold a popular short message service center SMSC product. While headquartered in the U.S., most of the company's research and development was done in Israel. Converse became one of the more visible success stories in Israel's high-tech industry. It was one of Israel's largest employers of software engineers, was closely followed in the nation's business press, and was the first Israeli-associated company to join the S&P 500 index. In 2006, Converse was involved in an options backdating scandal. Alexander and two other top executives were charged in the U.S. with multiple counts of conspiracy, fraud, money laundering and making false filings. Alexander fled the country to Namibia where he engaged in a prolonged fight against extradition. The scandal proved difficult for Converse Technology to recover from. The company was delisted from Nasdaq, removed from the S&P 500, and spent the next several years consumed by the costly need to restate its financial reports for several years. Additionally affected by the financial crisis of 2008 and on and changes in the mobile phone market, the company underwent several rounds of large-scale layoffs and sold off parts of its business. By 2011 the company began a turnaround. During 2012 and 2013, Converse Technology divested itself of all its holdings and ceased to exist. The two independent companies that carried on its most well-known product lines were a newly independent Converse and Verint Systems. After further mergers Converse became Zura in 2015 and then Mavenir in 2017, while part of the Converse business went to Amdocs in 2015. Subsidiaries <inaudible> 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 Converse Technology had multiple subsidiaries Converse, also known as Converse Network Systems or Converse CNS, is a provider of software and systems enabling value-added services for voice, messaging, mobile internet and mobile advertising, converged billing and active customer management, and IP communications. Converse's solutions support flexible deployment models, including in-network, hosted and managed services, and can run on circuit-switched, IP, IMS, and converged network environments. Converse's customer base spans more than 130 countries and covers over 500 communication service providers serving more than 2 billion subscribers. It typically provided some 70% of Converse Technologies' overall revenue. Converse has 100 local offices in 40 countries, with its corporate headquarters located in Wakefield, Massachusetts, in the U.S. Verint Systems, which, from 1999 to 2002, was known as Converse Infosys, is a provider of solutions for analysis of intercepted communications, digital video-focused security and surveillance, and analytics and business intelligence for the enterprise. 
Their products are aimed to enable government and enterprises to make sense of the vast information they collect to meet performance and security goals. Varint solutions are used by more than 10,000 organizations in 150 countries. Varint is headquartered in Melville, New York, with offices worldwide and 2,500 employees around the globe. By 2011, Varint was 52% owned by Converse Technology. Ulticom provides signaling solutions for wireless, wireline, and Internet communications. Ulticom's products are used by telecommunication equipment and service providers worldwide to deploy mobility, location, payment, switching, and messaging services. Ulticom is headquartered in Mount Laurel, New Jersey, with additional offices in the United States, Europe, and Asia. Converse acquired Ulticom in 1996 and sold it in 2010. Startel sells integrated voice, data and networking solutions for use in call centers worldwide. It was originally an independent company that was acquired by Converse Technology in 1992. Starhome provides roaming services for mobile network operators. The Starhome portfolio includes international roaming services and core network solutions across various technologies, including intelligent networks and next-generation networks. It was fully owned by Converse Technology until being sold to Fortissimo Capital in 2012 for $54 million. Comza was a venture capital operation, created as a subsidiary in partnership with Soros Fund Management, that invested in startup companies directly and was active in the late 1990s and early 2000s. History Origins. <inaudible> 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 The company's origins date to 1982 or 1983, sources differ, when three Israelis, aspiring investment banker Jacob Kobe, Alexander of Shearson Loeb Rhodes, engineer Boaz Misholi, and Alexander brother-in-law and Columbia University computer science professor Yeshim Yemini, got together and founded an Israeli startup company, Efrat Future Technologies Limited. In a meeting in New York, Ms. Holy had the idea of building a business around centralized hardware systems to support voice and fax messaging and selling them to telecommunications companies and other large enterprises, who could then resell the voice and fax services to their customers. The three quickly returned to Israel and started the company, with the goal of securing Israeli government grants to fund the research and development work. The early years of the company were difficult. In 1984, they founded Converse in the United States, which became the parent company of Efrat. The name, Converse, was chosen as a fusion of the words, communication, and versatility. In 1986 Converse went public on the Nasdaq stock market with a $20 million valuation, the company used the money so gained as its final round of funding. The three founders had trouble working with each other, and Yemini divorced Alexander's sister. In 1987, Alexander was left with sole control of the company after the other two pulled out. The company was a penny stock on the edge of collapse. Topic: Early successes. Under his lead, Alexander was credited with turning around Converse's fortunes. In 1989, the Ascom Group made a $6 million direct investment in the company. In 1990, Converse won a potentially $10 million contract, its largest yet, to deliver computers running voicemail and fax applications on West German cellular networks, beating out far larger corporations in the process. Deutsche Telekom became one of the company's biggest early customers. By 1991, the company had annual sales of $17 million and was selling a combined voice and fax mailbox system. Many of its early successes came from avoiding the huge telecommunications companies in the U.S. and instead focusing on selling to small and medium-sized companies in the wireless market in Europe. 
The company also sought a variety of other markets, including developing countries such as Mexico and China for its Trilog virtual telephone service. Gradually its product emphasis shifted more from hardware to software. While headquartered in the US, nearly all its manufacturing was done in Israel, where it was able to substantially benefit from government subsidies and tax credits provided to research and development for high-tech firms and industries by the Office of the Chief Scientist in the Ministry of Trade and Industry and by the Israel US. The National Industrial Research and Development Foundation Many other Israeli companies were built by the same model, including another top software company, Mercury Interactive. During the 1990s, Converse received at least 69 research and development grants from the OCS program. In 1993, the company reported a 341% rise in profits on revenues in the $64 million range and was named a company to watch by Fortune magazine. However its stock plunged for a while in 1994 after a disappointing earnings report. By 1995, Converse was best known for its AudioDisc product, which was sold to overseas clients and allowed legal authorities and intelligence agencies to record and store data collected from wiretaps. Half the company's revenues at that point were from AudioDisc, and market analysts were recommending Converse's stock. Topic growth with wireless Converse became a market leader in voice messaging software and boomed during the late 1990s with the surge in mobile phone use. Much of its market focus was on wireless operators and overseas companies, and it gained a formidable position in the worldwide mobile voicemail management market. The growth coincided with SMS text messages becoming popular. The first big application for SMS was as a notification mechanism to tell a wireless subscriber that voicemail was stored in a voicemail box. Converse expanded this application into a full-blown short message service center SMSC, which receives, buffers, processes, and dispatches all SMS messages throughout a mobile network. Converse branded and productized this as the Intelligent Short Message Service Center, or ISMSC. Typical of telecom software, it ran on Unix-based platforms, such as Uniqware and later Linux. Converse's ISMSC found success as a lower price solution for lower traffic networks, where it competed with Logica's Telepath solution. Other companies in the SMSC space included CMG and OpenWave. ISMSC found considerable market penetration, exemplified by all six of Hong Kong's wireless carriers using it. Converse also became a participant in forming international wireless standards, such as in 2001 for the speech application language tags, SALT markup language for XML to add voice capabilities to web based applications. Additional industry standards groups in which Converse has been active include the Open Mobile Alliance and Trademark Forum. In addition to growing organically, Converse Technology began acquiring other companies in both Israel and the U.S. It acquired Dale, Gasek, McWilliams, and Sheridan, later known as DGM and S Telecom, in 1996 and renamed it Ulticom in 1999. Converse Technology acquired one of its key rivals, Boston Technology, for $843 million in stock in 1997. The acquisition gave Converse entree into the large U.S. telecommunications market and meant Converse would be supplying voice messaging systems to 12 of the world's top 20 carriers, and left it the third largest supplier after Lucent and Northern Telecom. In 1999, as it saw record earnings, Converse formed two wholly owned subsidiaries, Converse Network Systems and Converse Infosys, representing the telecommunications services platforms and products and the digital monitoring and recording products, respectively. By 2000, its revenues were $1.2 billion and it had global operations. It continued to aggressively acquire small companies to fill out its technologies, as exemplified by the purchase of Laranix, Gaia Software, and Exalink, all within a 30-day period in 2000. The company's stock price rose from around $10 in late 1998 to over $120 in early 2001. 
The company was able to raise money several times on NASDAQ, including once for its Ulticom subsidiary and once at a valuation of $600 million shortly before the dot com bubble burst. Converse was one of the most prominent and profitable success stories in Israel's high tech industry, with both Haaretz and the Jerusalem Post referring to it as a flagship of that industry. As CEO, Alexander was sought out for meetings in Tel Aviv by world leaders such as Chinese President Jiang Zemin. He became known, as Bloomberg News later stated, as the wizard of Israel's technology boom. His oft-stated goal was for Converse to do for Israel what Nokia had done for Finland. Converse was one of the largest employers of software engineers in Israel and its stock was widely held among the Israeli investing public. As a consequence, the successes and failures of Converse were always followed closely in the country's financial press. Amdocs and Mercury Interactive were two other prominent Israeli companies in the enterprise software sector that were also closely followed. The company was also quintessentially Israeli in how it was run, with Converse CEO Zf Bregman in particular favoring a loose, relaxed system in which he knew all the employees and lines of management reporting were frequently bypassed. When Converse Technology joined the S&P 500 index in 1999, it was the first Israeli-associated company ever to do so. It set the same mark when it joined the Nasdaq 100 index. The early 2000s recession led to some struggles for Converse Technology, with the global economic downturn leading to publicly announced profit warnings and a plunge in the stock price in July 2001. Over 3,000 jobs were cut during the period as part of several restructuring efforts. The company still made some acquisitions, such as buying the instant messaging specialist Odigo for $20 million in 2002, after having previously purchased a 12% stake in it in 2001. The image of Converse Technology as Israel's blue-chip high-tech stock suffered, and led to a slide in several other large Israeli technology firms. Converse's management was criticized by analysts for having issued over-optimistic forecasts, although many other Israeli firms in the industry did even worse or failed completely during this period. In addition, the European market for mobile voicemail management was already saturated by 2002 and the prepaid wireless market was in decline. In 2002, Converse Infosys changed its name to Verint, partly to separate its more thriving business from Converse's struggles, and staged a modestly successful IPO of a minority portion of its stock. By 2002, Converse Technology had more than 5,000 employees across nearly 40 countries. Due to the partial spin offs and economic difficulties, revenues were down to $735 million. In December 2001, a Fox News report raised the concern that wiretapping equipment provided by Converse Infosys to the U.S. government for electronic eavesdropping may have been vulnerable, as these systems allegedly had a back door through which the wiretaps could be intercepted accepted by unauthorized parties. Fox News reporter Carl Cameron said there was no reason to believe the Israeli government was implicated, but that a classified top-secret investigation is underway. A March 2002 story by Le Monde recapped the Fox report and concluded, Converse is suspected of having introduced into its systems of the catch gates in order to intercept, record and store these wiretaps. This hardware would render the listener himself listened to. Fox News did not pursue the allegations, and in the years since, there have been no legal or commercial actions of any type taken against Converse by the FBI or any other branch of the U.S. government related to data access and security issues. While no real evidence has been presented against Converse or Verint, the allegations have become a favorite topic of conspiracy theorists. By 2005, the company had $959 million in sales and employed over 5,000 people, of whom about half were located in Israel. That country held most of the research and development workers, many of whom occupied the company's seven buildings on Habazel in the Ramat Hahel district of Tel Aviv, while business and marketing operations were stationed in the company's Woodbury, New York headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> Options backdating and improper accounting 
In 2006, Converse Technology was involved in an options backdating scandal. In May of that year, company founder and CEO Jacob Alexander stepped down from his position. Alexander, finance chief David Kreinberg, and former senior general counsel William Sorin, both of whom had also stepped down, were charged in July 2006 in the United States District Court for the Eastern District of New York with multiple counts of conspiracy, fraud, money laundering, and making false filings to the Securities and Exchange Commission (SEC), all related to alleged options backdating or other actions related to stock options between 1998 and. 2006. The accusations against the three included the backdating of options to when Converse stock had been trading at low prices, the use of fake names of option holders, and the creation of secret funds in which to hold the illicit gains. The SEC also filed civil charges against the three, for filing false annual and quarterly financial reports and proxy statements from 1991 to 2005. By then, Alexander had already fled the country and was classified a wanted fugitive in August 2006 by the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation. On 27 September 2006, he was arrested in Namibia after hiding in Vindhoek with his family, where he had bought a house at a country club. If extradited to the U.S. and convicted, he faced 25 years in prison. He was released on bail and subsequently engaged in a long, and so far successful, battle to avoid extradition to the U.S. In Namibia, neither money laundering nor options backdating is a crime. Upon leaving the U.S., he had transferred some $64 million to Israel, with most of that ending up in Namibia. Another $50 million was blocked by the U.S. government, which overall sought the forfeiture of $130. $38 million of Alexander's assets. In April 2010, Alexander won a victory in the Supreme Court of Namibia that allowed him to continue to live and work in that country until the extradition request is finally ruled upon. In November 2010, Alexander agreed to pay the U.S. government $53.6 million to settle the SEC's case against him, with those monies being targeted to settle assorted lawsuits against Converse by shareholders. Of the other two executives, William Sorin pleaded guilty to criminal charges and was sentenced to a year in prison in 2007. David Kreinberg cooperated with prosecutors, repaid $2.4 million to the SEC, and in 2011 was sentenced to the time served of the minimal period he had originally been in custody. While over a hundred companies were investigated or charged with options backdating, Converse was one of the most known cases, and in the words of a pair of financial writers, Converse was the poster child for stock option fraud. Topic continuing difficulties The scandal proved difficult for Converse Technology to recover from. The three charged executives, who had stayed on as consultants, were fired without severance pay, and the company said it would pursue legal action against them. The board of directors was expanded from five to ten, with all of the new ones being Americans rather than Israelis. A new CEO, Andre Dahan, came on board in April 2007 but the ongoing management crisis prevented the company from engaging in new innovation or entering new business areas. Despite the 2006-2007 economic climate being one of growth, layoffs occurred in mid-2007. Research analysts began speculating that the company might break up because of the accounting issues from the option backdating. Converse Technology was unable to file full or timely financial reports with the SEC. Its stock was delisted from the Nasdaq stock market on the 1st of February 2007 and removed from the S&P 500 and Nasdaq 100 at the same time. The stock then traded on the pink sheets. In 2009, the SEC settled its case with Converse Technology. The company would not be subject to penalty fines over the backdating matter, but would accept a permanent injunction against itself regarding any future violations of law regarding publicly traded companies. A settlement in a similar case against Ulticom was also reached. 
The failure to file timely financial reports put the company at risk of having its stock registration revoked, a process deciding this, involving the SEC and an administrative law judge, is still active of 2011. The financial crisis of 2008 and on caused further difficulties for Converse Technology, with new layoffs occurring in October 2008, March 2009, and August 2009. The company reportedly lost considerable money in 2009, and the moves were typical of other high-tech companies caught in the bad economic environment. Some of Converse's products were still viewed highly, a Yankee Group survey ranked them first in the world in their type of billing services, and they were the worldwide market share leaders in providing multimedia message service centers to wireless carriers. However, the rise in popularity of smartphones and of sending email eroded the carrier market for some of Converse's products and services. By 2009, the company's upper management was now largely American rather than Israeli, Dahan was under internal criticism, and there were frequent clashes regarding company culture. By early 2010, Converse Technology was planning to finally release an annual report with full financial statements and return to being fully listed on NASDAQ, but still was anticipating more layoffs. One piece of positive news in July 2010 was an $80 million investment by well-known entrepreneur George Soros. However, the promised financial reports did not come, and an August 2010 public announcement that the company was short on cash and planning more layoffs and was subject to its stock being completely delisted caused a precipitous drop in the stock's price, with the market valuation of the company falling below $1 billion. CEO Dahan said simply, These are challenging times. By August 2010, analysts were stating that Converse Technology might have to break up by selling off its subsidiaries and spin off Converse's own business units. Running low on cash, Converse Technology engaged Goldman Sachs to explore such possibilities, with several large, well known technology companies potentially interested in Converse and some private equity firms possibly interested in Verint. The company had some 4,000 employees, and continued having about half of them employed in Israel and most of the rest in the U.S. and France. The continuing financial reporting problems had cost the company some $500 million in accountants' fees and related costs since 2006 and was the largest drain on its cash position. The fact that senior management awarded itself bonuses in a time of various rounds of layoffs left employees feeling outraged. Converse's restructuring also affected its 2006 acquired Netcentrex business unit in France, with layoffs or a shutdown possible. In October 2010, Converse Technology agreed to sell its two thirds ownership of its Ulticom subsidiary to a U.S. private equity firm for $90 million. The deal closed in December 2010. The company also sold part of its holdings in Verint, netting $80 million, and sold for $27 million land in the high tech area of Raranana, north of Tel Aviv, where it had been planning to build a new headquarters. In October 2010, Converse Technology finally published its restated financial reports for fiscal years 2005 through 2008. The company's fiscal year N runs from February of year N to January of N plus 1. They revealed that the company lost about $1 billion during that period. In February 2011, the company announced that due to this effort, its report for fiscal 2009 would be delayed, and also that it was restructuring into four independent business units and focusing much of its emphasis on billing systems for mobile carriers. Layoffs also resumed, with more possibly in the offing. In March 2011, revenues for fiscal 2009 were announced at $1.58 billion, down from $1.72 billion two years previously, with an overall loss of $273.3 million. Dahan stepped down as CEO. During his tenure, Converse Technology stock fell 68% in price and 2,000 to 2,500 employees were laid off. He made more than $20 million during that time and gained payments of some $5 million upon his departure. Overall, his stint as leader of the company was not regarded positively by some in the Israeli business press. The new CEO was Charles Burdick, who had been non executive chairman of the company. 
Burdick became the first American to head the company. In April 2011, the company agreed to a $2.8 million settlement with the U.S. government over violations of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act that had taken place between 2003 and 2005. Payments of $536,000 had been made to the Hellenic Telecommunications Organization in order to obtain purchase orders and had been inaccurately reported as sales commissions in Converse's accounting. Topic hopes for recovery During the first half of 2011, analysts such as Oppenheimer & Co., J.P. Morgan and Barclays said that with its accounting problems largely behind it, some restructuring done, and an improving cash balance and some revenue growth, Converse technology was well positioned for ongoing operations or a possible sale. Zach's investment research predicted the company would again show a profit for fiscal year 2011. Converse itself had gained tens of millions in new business, was hiring again in modest numbers, and was at about 4,000 employees, including some on an outsourcing basis. In June 2011, results for fiscal 2010 were announced, finally bringing the company current with its annual audited reporting. Revenues rose to $1.63 billion while the company's net loss was halved to $132.3 million, and the cash position was now stated as being sufficient to meet foreseeable needs. Another positive sign for its recovery came when it was relisted on NASDAQ in September 2011. In April 2012, results for fiscal 2011 were announced. Revenues remained flat at $1.59 billion while the company's net loss decreased again to $58.7 million. Topic: <inaudible> Restructuring. In August 2012, a series of transactions were announced that would end Converse Technology as a functioning entity, by making Converse Network Systems an independent company once again known simply as Converse, allowing Verint Systems to buy back Converse Technology's majority stake, and selling off the other subsidiaries. Burdick said. The Verint agreement, along with the planned spin-off of Converse Network Systems, will result in a tax-efficient distribution to our shareholders and direct ownership in two independent, well-capitalized publicly traded companies." Philippe Tartaval was named as the CEO of the newly independent Converse. Results for fiscal year 2012 for the restructured Converse, Inc. demonstrated a return to profitability, with a net income of $5.1 million. These restructuring transactions were completed on 4 February 2013 and represented the effective liquidation of the Converse Technology holding entity. Further actions followed the end of Converse Technology. During June 2015, Converse divested its BSS business to Amdocs. In September 2015 after a merger this new Converse entity changed its name to Zura and after a further series of acquisitions and mergers in February 2017 it became part of Mavenir. Topic industry recognition Over the years, Converse Technology won a number of awards within its industry, including, 2002 Technology Marketing Corporation's Product of the Year for Verence Ultra Intelliminer 2004 CMP Media's Product of the Year for Verence Ultra Intelligent Recording 2004 CDMA Development Group's Innovative Solutions Award for Converse's Multimedia Messaging Service Center 2005, 2006, 2006 2007, 2008, 2009 Frost and Sullivan's Telecom BSS Vendor of the Year Award for Converse's Business Support Systems in the Asia Pacific Region 2007 International Engineering Consortium's Best VoIP Product or Service Award for Converse's Converged at Centrex Solution 2007 Technology Marketing Corporation's IMS Leadership Award for Converse's Converged Messaging Solution 2007 International Engineering Consortium Infovision Awards for Best New Product for Converse's Converged Billing Suite 2007 Technology Marketing Corporation's Internet Telephony Excellence Award for Converse's MyCall Converged Communications Product 2009, 2010 Technology Marketing Corporation's Internet Telephony BSS, OS Excellence Award for Converse's One Billing and Active Customer Management Package 2010 Virgo Publishing's Excellence Award for Best Cost Management Implementation for 
for Converse's business support system product. Topic: Bibliography. Bresnitz, Dan. 2007. Innovation and the State: Political Choice and Strategies for Growth in Israel, Taiwan, and Ireland. Revised ed. New Haven, Yale University Press. ISBN 0-300-12018-4. Commander, Simon. 2005. The Software Industry in Emerging Markets. Cheltenham, Edward Elgar Publishing. ISBN 1-84542-247-3. Long A. Donald. 2003. Wireless Messaging Demystified. New York, McGraw-Hill Professional. ISBN 0-07-138629-7. Sana, David E. Y., Malik, Andrew. 2010. History of Greed, Financial Fraud from Tulip Mania to Bernie Madoff. John Wiley & Sons. ISBN 0-470-60180-9.